Uranium and thorium exist in several different isotopic forms as shown in this table here. The majority of natural uranium, more than 99% by weight, exists in the form of 238, followed by only about 0.71% in the form of uranium-234, and only about 0.05% uranium-235. On the other hand, thorium exists mainly in the form of thorium-232, it's about 99.98%, compared to 0.02% of thorium-230, and trace amounts of the other five isotopes. Out of these forms, it's uranium-238 and thorium-232, which are most important in its radioactive dating. Uranium-thorium dating differs from radiocarbon dating as it does not measure the end of a decay product or the abundance or remaining nuclei left over after radioactive decay. Uranium-thorium dating is based on the activity ratios of the parent, so uranium, and the product thorium isotopes. This is done by calculating the disintegration of the parent, so uranium, into the daughter over time. This is done by the detection through mass spectrometry of both the parent uranium-234 and the daughter thorium-230 products of decay. Now, when uranium decays, it goes through a series of decay steps, beginning with uranium-238, until it eventually reaches a stable isotope, ending in lead-206. Here you can see the initial parent isotope decaying into the daughter isotopes, uranium-234, then thorium-230, radium-226, and so forth. The parent nucleide, such as uranium-238, at the top of the decay chain has a much longer half-life than all of the intermediate nucleides. As a result, the radioactivity of the parent nucleide slowly decays while the daughter is being produced at a higher rate. Eventually, the quantity of parent decayed and daughter produced will occur in equal quantities, producing what we call secular equilibrium. Until that state of equilibrium is reached, the measurement of the ratio between uranium-234 and thorium-230 allows us to calculate the time that has passed since formation of the sample initiated, thus giving us the age of the sample. This differs from radiocarbon dating, as you can see depicted in the plot in the upper right. In radiocarbon dating, the amount of 14C reduces over time, producing an inversely proportional relationship between 14C quantity and the age of the sample. This is slightly more complicated for uranium-thorium dating, which you can see on the bottom left plot. At the top, at time zero, the sample is made up entirely of uranium, which you can see in those green dots in the figure. But as time goes on, uranium decays into thorium, the red dots in the figure, and thus the samples have proportionately higher thorium content over time. Due to this, younger samples are made up more of parent atoms, since they have not undergone very much decay, whereas older samples are made up more of daughter atoms, since they have undergone more decay. It is through this relationship that we can approximate the sample age.